Thank you everyone for coming this afternoon. Um, I know it's late Friday afternoon and the conference is nearly about to end, so thank you all for being here. We all appreciate that. Um, real quick introductions. Uh, my name is Parth, uh, one of the co-founders at uh, Kusari. This is a supply chain security startup and our, one of our main focus is on the project Walk and you know, securing the supply chain um, you know, via secure build um, as well as uh, the knowledge graph. Hello, uh, I am Mihai, like the Taylor Swift song. Uh, it's Mihai, <laughs> Mihai Marosak. Uh, I joined Google five years ago to build TensorFlow security, and s since a year ago, I started working on Guac with uh, Ghost, Google's open source security team. And this talk today is going to be about Guac. What is Guac, what can Guac do, and so on. But first, let's start with the context. So imagine some 10 years ago, five years ago, people started thinking, I need to implement this thing, but there is already this package that does the solution that I want. So yeah, sure, let me depend on left pad. Let me depend on this other dependency and so on. And suddenly we realized that our dependency chain is very huge, very fractal-like nature, and very, very complicated. And recently there is the executive order and similar legislation that asks us to take into account our dependencies and have a better control over them. And Everyone started generating as bombs, and now the question is, what do we do with those as bombs? Dump them into database, but that's not enough. We need to do more. And Guac is giving you what to do with the as bombs. So basically, Guac is first a knowledge graph of uh, software metadata. So starting from the as bombs, from SALS attestations, from all of these artifacts. You can build that knowledge graph about everything that you have in your supply chain, and then you can query it, you can build integration on top of that, you can expand and answer any questions about supply chain and security. So as a positioning compared to other software uh, solutions in the supply chain uh, stack, Guac is at the green level. So at the red level, at the base, we have the trust foundation, so starting with reflections on trusting trust and uh, trust but verify. We have six store, then on top of that we have attestations, salsa, SBOM, VEX, and so on. Then from the other end you have policies, but instead of basing the policies directly on the attestation, it's better to base them on some aggregation and synthesis layer, and this is where Guac comes in. And as a company, let's say you have your own software, your own dependencies inside the company and outside of the company, and now you follow the legislative order and you build uh, S-bombs with SPDX or CycloneDX or whatever other format you want to do. What do you do with that? As I said before, we put them into Guac and just copy them there. And now the question is, what do you do with that? Guac is not just a static database. In fact, as soon as you insert something into Guac, it tries to link it to everything else that is inside there. So, I ingested some components, it detected that you depend on this artifact, but this artifact comes from this other repository, it creates the link between them, and you can start asking questions about the entire chain. So from there, like you might be wondering, okay, like, yes, what do I do right away with Guac, right? It's like, okay, I have, I have the, uh, all these uh, S-bombs, attestations, and so forth, can I put them into Guac, and can I locate them quickly? Can I figure out, okay, what packages actually have SBOMs associated with them, what have uh, Salsa attestations associated with them, but at the same time, what don't have Salsa and uh, SBOMs? So we can find all this information very quickly. So if you're starting off in your journey, if you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm just generating SBOMs, I'm just generating um, attestations, I wanna store them somewhere that I can query them quickly, and also at the same time, utilize all the information within them to make uh, actual decisions. But at the same time, do, because I'm expanding my uh, supply chain, I can figure out now what other packages that don't have these uh, S-bombs and attestations and what, what, what do I need to do next to generate them and so forth. So let me start off. Um, we're gonna be switching back and forth between the slides, um, between the slides and the actual demo. Um, so, so I'm gonna come here. Um, so what I'm gonna show off here is uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have multiple components of Guac running on separate terminals. Um, in, in reality, and when you actually use it in, in, the, you know, in your demo, in, demo environment or wherever you want to use it, um, we have a Docker Compose as well as a Helm chart, so all this stuff will come up for you automatically, but I want to show them off individually just to highlight all the different features and so forth. Um, so the first thing I'm going to kick off is this uh, jet stream, um, NAS jet stream, so that's the PubSub uh, layer on top of it, and we're working to, you know, 
I think people have like other pub subs they might already be using, so we're looking to see if there's, um, we could replace that or make it modular so, and so forth. So the first piece I'm gonna kick off here is just the graph database itself, right? So this is the GraphQL layer, which is gonna be the in-memory database. I'm just kicking that off. Um, what it does is also, it's gonna kick off this, and let me switch over to it uh, here. So uh, it also kicks off this playground area, which are where I can query more information and so forth, and we'll get back to this uh, later on in the demo. So going back to the terminal, um, the next thing I'm gonna kick off is the ingestion piece. So this is the, the guac ingestion. Um, so this kind of takes all the information, um, like aggregates from everywhere, and ingests that into the graph database. So it takes all the, the SBOMs and salt status stations, breaks them down into individual components and nodes and edges, and puts that into the database. Uh, the collector subscriber is another service. Um, like I said, this is all individual pieces I wanna show off individually, but you, you don't have to be thinking about this or, or worrying about them. This is all like in the background, but I'm just kicking them off individually just to, just to talk about them. So this specific uh, service basically allows us to, uh, allows Guac to be the dynamic database basically, like, like what Mihai was saying, right? It's not just static. We wanna see if there's more information out there via devs.dev, OSV, or some other third party uh, provider grab that information and ingest that into the database to expand out your view of the, the knowledge of the supply chain. Um, so here I'm gonna kick off the devs.dev collector, right? So it's gonna reach out to devs.dev and pull in all the information that it can. Um, this one is the OSV one that I spoke about, the OSV certifier. So it's gonna go in and check the OSV database to see if there are any vulnerabilities associated with the various packages that I'm ingesting and automatically uh, certify them. Uh, and that's we kicked off. This is the visualizer. Um, and for some reason it crashed. So this is the demo gods, of course. And there we go. So it's running. So all good. Yes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I, I have we have this repository guac data, uh, and, and in there is a bunch of um, XPDX, Cyclone DX, salsa attestation, so forth. There's various things in there that we want to start ingesting. So I'm just going to kick that off. And right away, we can come back to this other view here, and you can see the ingester automatically picking up all these things. And you can see the various things, uh, various different things that it's trying to collect. So for example, there is a has SBOM, there's a um, salsa attestation, um, the, there's certified vulnerability and so forth. So it's taking all this information and breaking it out into, into individual nodes and edges uh, automatically for you. Um, whether it's XPDX, Cyclone DX, salsa, uh, we want to support other ITE6 in total attestations and so forth, so that's all in the works. Um, so let me, before I move on, so let me kick off the thing before I miss it. So let's say, for example, I want to query um, this thing, and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so it went, I, I was a little bit too slow, so what ha was supposed to happen here in this demo is basically I was, I knew this specific package is, um, is a dependency on one of my, one of my uh, SBOMs. Um, and I automatically, when I ingested it, it went out from, to devs.dev, and devs.dev knew about it, and it knew that there was a source information, there's a source, the source of it was this, uh, this URL here, um, and it found that information and, and put that into my database automatically for me. Um, at the same time, the, uh, once I come back to it a little bit later, the, the certifier is also gonna run, and it's gonna tell me, oh, there's, is there a vulnerability associated with it or not, right? So it's gonna be continuously doing this in the background for us at all times. Um, so even, so for example, right, we have timestamps on all these vulnerability certifications. So let's say, you know, you set it, you know, depending on what the user wants, they can set it for, you know, a day or a week or an, or an hour, and it'll go back and recheck to see if the package now is vulnerable or not, right? So you're not sitting there like, oh, I, I checked it once. You can recheck it again and again, and it'll keep updating the information for you. So, um, now that I missed that step, let me keep moving forward. So we see in there, um, so let me show here this piece. So what I'm gonna query here, um, and this is one of the various integrations we have via GraphQL. Um, this is a CLI that we have. Um, this, this is one of the queries we, we have, which is called known, query known. Basically, tell me everything you know about this Perl. And that's what I'm trying to get here. So what I, when I run this, um, it tells me, okay, this, this I knew because I, I actually, this is the one I ingested um, via the, the, the initial step. So it tells me, oh, remember, uh, the initial thing I was saying is like, do I know if I have an SBOM associated with it and where is it located? So you can see here, 
the SBOM download location is there. That's where I, that's where I, where I initially ingested it from. And then this could be like an S3 bucket. Right? We did it from a local file store, but we can do it from an S3 bucket or a Google Cloud bucket, wherever else kind of thing. Um, so we have various collectors from there. Um, we're also thinking about doing the, uh, having like an uh, evidence store where you can like store the SBOMs and attestations at a later date if you wanted to collect them, um, but that's an upcoming feature. And then here I want to show, uh, okay. So this other thing I want to show is like at the same time, right, it's not just about packages and URLs. It's also about you know, source repositories. It can also be about specific artifacts and specific caches. So here I'm gonna run this. Um, like this, if you look at this, this is the exact same package that I created up here. Uh, this is that source that I showed, uh, that I, I, dependent package that I, that I knew about and then I queried for it and it's like, oh, here's a source. This is a source associated with that specific package. And then I can go query that specific source now and tell me more information about that source. So automatically, again, uh, it's found the scorecard information, right? So now you can see there's a scorecard, overall scorecard associated with 3.6, which is not very good, right? So maybe, you know, maybe we wanna move away or maybe we can work with the, the maintainer to go uh, increase that score. So let me go back to the slides here. So what I showed off there, right, is the whole, the devs.dev piece, right? So like, uh, because it's not a static database, because it's trying to work and find more information without you doing anything extra work, right? It's trying to make all these connections automatically for you. You know, via, uh, via it's, if it's the packages, if it's the artifacts, if it has more information, it'll try to go grab it for you. Um, right now it's devs.dev, I think we have like an OCI integration and we wanna add more and more integrations as we can, so that's all upcoming. So the next thing I'm gonna show off is that vulnerability piece, right? So we showed off uh, the devs.dev, now what about vulnerabilities, right? The, the question that gets asked uh, is like, oh, am I vulnerable to a specific vulnerability, right? So let's, let's, let's look at that. So what I'm gonna show off here um, is, so again, I, I know this is my top level, oops, I copy that wrong. You know this is not fake because I'm doing this in. Oops. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. Back in business. Um, so what this is doing now again, this is another CLI that we have. Um, another integration is okay based on a, a Perl that I give it. Right. Tell me if I am vulnerable. And not just at the package level, but all, at all of its dependencies. If, you know, if there are transitive dependencies that are vulnerable, I wanna know about it. So give me all that information. So you can see like a quick output, like yeah, here are all the different uh, vulnerability IDs that, it, that the database knows about. And again, I didn't do anything extra, right? I just ingested my SBOM. That's all I did from the beginning. So there is a visualizer URL you can see down there, so I'm gonna copy that. And you can, of course, uh, you know, control click to do that also. Um, so I'm gonna run it over here and ignore that error. It shouldn't there we go. So you can see this is, on a, on again, another uh, experimental feature that we have. It's called a Guac Visualizer. And this is more like exploratory. You can see exactly what's happening in there, uh, in, inside, your, in, inside you know, the database. And so for example, you can see uh, here is that, that image that I kind of generated. I knew you know, like there's gonna be vulnerabilities in there. Um, especially, of course, our friend Log4j uh, pokes his head out again, and it's in there. Um, so Log4j is one of the, one of the, the the uh, vulnerabilities that we see in here. At the same time, another, of course, another big one is the text for shell, and they're both vulnerable. So you can see exactly how they are vulnerable. So you can see there's a, there's a direct dependency to that specific package, and that's how it's vulnerable. At the same time, let's say if it's if it's a transitive dependency within another dependency, right? Then we can see that also. So it'll show that off, and you can find out. Okay, maybe it's not. If I go update this specific package, then I can then I then that vulnerability will go away, right? Um, we also want to, uh, this is like a the visualizer is still very much uh, new and still in the works. So we want to make it easier for like, you know, so for example, I know that this specific package is bad. I want to know where else is it used, right? I want to know where else the specific version of text for shell might be used 
So this way I know I can go update those quickly. So I can click on it and, and go update that. So all those kind of different features we can do, right, because we have the data for it, it's just that we just have to work on the integrations and the, and the visualization. Uh, so the next thing I want to show off is, like, you, want, you know there is a specific vulnerability, right? There's a specific vulnerability associated with, um, let's see, um, there, if, so I know a specific vulnerability ID. Am I affected by it? Right? So that's what I want to know. And is there a path that leads to that specific vulnerability, right? Whether it's transitive or, or direct dependency, right? So here again, we can do a similar thing. Is like we can visualize that again. Um, let me copy this over. And we can visualize exactly, okay, where, where in that path, like as I'm, as I'm going down, where is it, where is it affected by? You know, is it a transitive dependency? Um, what layers do I need to fix? What different packages do I need to fix to be able to immediately meet that? So again, we can visualize that. Um, so those are the various integrations that we kind of have. You can imagine that in the future when we have also VEX integration, this would also show yes. VEX attached to each node and we can see, oh, I'm using this package that has a vulnerability, but I'm not actually using the vulnerable part, so I should be okay. Exactly, yep, so VEX is another thing. We have an open PR um, for VEX, and so we wanna start integrating that. Um, so, right, based on this, we have the GraphQL API and so forth. We can do various things, right? So we can, we can do policy checks, we can do patch planning, um, like we kind of talked about, and figure out, okay, where, where are the critical things that we need to go fix quickly? Um, so again, let's, let's do a couple more demos here. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna show off is, for example, oh, I did miss this one thing, so I'm gonna show this off here real quick, is I did not show off the salsa piece, so I wanna show that off and the orientation because it's such so large is kind of getting messed up, but again, you know, we ingested the salsa attestation. Um, I think later on, Miha will kind of go into kind of showing off more details about what it ingested, but for now, we know that this specific uh, there is an salsa attestation associated with it, and you see the the package URL has a guac generic, right? So that's uh, that's we're inferring the package right now, but that's going to get uh, get modified once the you know once salsa gets updated to use the uh, uh, resource resource descriptor type, uh, which will include a lot more information. So this way, then it won't be inferred. So it'll give you much more accurate information. And again, you can visualize and so forth. I'll oh, go ahead. Sure, yeah. Thanks. So you mentioned uh, you ingested sal salsa attestation. So Correct. What did you mean by that? Uh, so we ingest it into, into the graph database itself. So all the parameters and all the predicate, all the, the various uh, attributes of the predicate and so forth are, are, are part of this. So you can use it as a for policies and so forth. So is that separate from the SBOM? Is that, or is that, the, is that attestation part of the SBOM? So it's so it's separate from the SBOM, right? So uh, the salsa attestation has an artifact, right? It's based on a hash usually. Okay. So it's gonna be connected to the package via the, the hash that's associated with it. So okay. when you query, kind of like, uh, I wanna know something more about this package, right? The package could also have an SBOM. Okay. It could also have an attestation, salsa attestation associated with it and so forth, oh, like so how the, it was built. So the attestation graph is separate from the SBOM graph? Uh, no, they get linked. So the document itself, you can do an LS on the document. The document itself is separate, it's a separate file that gets ingested. Mm -hmm. But you're but building one Yeah, graph. as soon as it gets ingested, it it's, gets It's all one graph. One yeah. graph. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Um, so the next thing I kinda wanna show off here is, for example, um, right, I want to be able to certify that, and I think that's that error again, so let me just, Um, so what I'm going to show off, oops, that's not the wrong one, I probably copied that over now. And let me copy it back over here. Okay. So here, the next thing I want to show off is the, uh, for example, uh, you, know, you know, in the news or something comes up, maybe via a threat or something, that a specific package might be bad or a specific source might be bad or an artifact might be bad. So I want to be like, oh, I want to certify this bad, meaning that I, I don't want anybody to be using this thing. And then at the same time, um, then figure out, okay, where am I using this? Where, what, what else depends on that specific package or source or something that I, would, I need to go modify right away because I know that it's bad. And right now we're doing this manually for demo purposes, but you can imagine this being like um, a, a threat feed kind of coming in and giving you this kind of information 
And I think uh, counterfactuals, um, if you want to explain that. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that later for the okay. counterfactuals. Sure. Um, so I'm, well, I'm just gonna do this again uh, manually. So I'm just certifying the log for J1 bad, right, of course. And then I'm going to certify this specific source bad. So I just kind of want to show off, okay, what kind of, what do we, what do we see out of this? All right, so what I'll do is I'll run the, my last query uh, that we have. It's called query bad, uh, original name, right? Um, so this is gonna be, you can choose now, right? You can choose the information, like just to make it simple for the user, we have like a, a drop down here. And you can choose, okay, which certified bad did I ingest? Um, so in this case, I wanna see log4j. So what this actually outputs is going to be the reverse kind of graph, right? So it's gonna be, okay, uh, I, 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 this is the thing that is bad, uh, and what do I need to go update kind of thing? What, what depends on this? So right, again, because I, I ingested that bad uh, vulnerability, um, the, that image that had that log4j, and that's the only one, uh, luckily, um, we can see that, okay, this is the only one that I need to go update. So that specific image that I have is the one that's using log4j, and people update that. Um, similarly, let's do it for that, that source one now. So again, if I query bad, I click on the source. So you can see a bunch more output here. Copy this. Drop it here. And this gives back a bunch of things. So again, you see that, that node here, that certified bad that I, that I just generated manually. And you can see that here are a bunch of other things, um, other nodes we have called has source at. And all these packages down here are all considered, uh, they're, all, they're all coming from that source. So now I know, oh, these are the packages that are actually bad and I need to, I need to be worried about them. So again, like I was saying, we could always, um, you can de dig in deeper, like you know, we wanna make it so that you can click on that, uh, click on that node and again, figure out where else am I dependent on that, where else do I need to update it. You can also do like a JSON output, so you can, you can be like, okay, now I know this is a bad thing, where, can I use this in, in another query or uh, another policy environment or something that I can figure out, okay, what do I need to go update quickly? So you can use this, for example, in two scenarios. One is uh, there is a vulnerability under embargo. You want to see how much you are affected before you drag people in to fix it. Mm -hmm. You can certify that the node about that vulnerability, the package, and then you get the blast radius. And the other scenario is, let's say you discover, you find out from news that uh, some CI CD system has been compromised and you want to see, okay, maybe this entire repository is compromised. I want to see how do I use that repository in my organization? I certify that that source, and then I see the entire blast radius. And lastly, what we wanna say um, is the, one of the cool kind of integrations you can think about is kind of shifting left, right? Now we have all this knowledge graph. How can we you know, help the developers upstream, right? Before it reaches uh, you know, some kind of a policy engine, can we make this information available to them quicker? Um, so what this is showing is kind of like, uh, we can have like a VS Code plugin that utilizes some of these queries that we have in, uh, utilizes the information that we have within the graph database to be like, oh, this, you know, for example, here is like a specific hash, right? This, we, the, we know that this specific hash is actually either certified bad or might contain a vulnerability and so forth, so don't actually use this, right? Maybe use something else. So giving that information quicker, the whole, whole mentality of shifting left. So this, these are the things that we kind of want to do um, as we go forward with the project. So all the demos that you, that you have seen so far are based on the GraphQL interface of Guac. So we try to make Guac as modular as possible. All the components of it can be replaced if needed or can be extended. So going from the bottom up, we have in integrations with different other projects in the open source ecosystem, in the supply chain ecosystem. You have like different documentation, different formats for attestations. We have a collectors and you can write different collectors. So for example, if you want to collect data from an S3 bucket or from an internal data store, data lake and so on, you can write your collector and start ingesting documents from there. After the documents are collected, they need to be parsed and translated into the vocabulary that uh, Guac uses to ingest into the database. So you can write your own parser, like if your own company has a different uh, format for specifying the dependency between packages or anything like this, you write your parser for that, you link it with Guac, and it can work. Mm -hmm. uh, this also helped us, so Salsa just released version 1.0 recently. It was just a few lines of code for us to change, and now we support all versions of Salsa, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1.0, without any big change in the entirety of Guac. And we have a roadmap in the future to actually 
not even need to recompile guac when uh, salsa changes or any other format changes. We'll do basically some predicate dictionary whenever you see this in the format, this is how you should parse it. And then once you get the, to the database to put stuff into the database, this is also handled via the GraphQL interface. So right now for the demos, we have used an in-memory database, but as the roadmap in the future, we want to do more persistent stuff. And initially we started with Neo4j for the initial demo, but now you can switch to any other database you want. So if you want a LangoDB or uh, let's say uh, Spanner or something like that, you can write the resolvers for that and use that. And finally on top, uh, no, it's other. on top of that, we can build applications on top of Guac. So we have shown you the visualizer. We are going to improve the UI and so on, but that's a demo that you can use that. You can write your own tools, either use the CLI or write your own pl IDE plugins and so on. And even we can even use the GraphQL client that is uh, available from the GraphQL server. And the general flow that we envision is you want to experiment with some new idea. You first use the GraphQL client and you experiment with that. So I can show a quick demo of that. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so this playground here. Uh, damn it. Okay, so we can have the documentation for the entire graph, for the entire GUAC uh, uh, knowledge, semantic uh, knowledge, but we can also run some queries. So for example, I'm running a query to see what all of my dependencies are. And I have, I run the query, I specify these are the fields that I want to receive. And in this case, the first thing that I get is uh, a dependency for this uh, Docker is uh, this dependent package, this Golang. And I get all of the information because that's what I specified in the GraphQL query. But maybe for my application that I want to build on top of Guac, I don't need all of these fields. So I can delete some of them, I can integrate more, I can use the documentation directly from this. Once I'm satisfied with the playground, I can then write an application, a CLI or a plugin for some product, and I have that at scale that works on the, my entire database. And going back, okay, so for the roadmap, uh, I already hinted that we want a persistent database and actually we want the community to tell us like, this is the database format that we probably want to use and we can work together to get to integrate support for all of them. Another thing that we want to do is harden the ingestion. Uh, start ingesting your documents into your local instance of Guac whenever there is a problem, report the issue for us. We know that all the S-bombs that are generated are not always complete, and sometimes one S-bomb might contain some information in one field, in other place it might contain it differently. We want to validate all of our assumptions and make sure that we can ingest all type of documents. Uh, another thing that we want to do is associate identity for every attestation that we ingest, such that later you can imagine somebody certifies bad one package, somebody says that this package is vulnerable to some dependency, some other attestation says, no, it's not vulnerable. We detect this uh, conflict and using the identities, we can decide, okay, I'm going to trust more this attestation because this person has more reputation. This organization has a bigger reputation. The other one that uh, gave uh, a false attestation, I can look to see what else they attested in my graph and I can see the entire blast radius from them, maybe discard all of their attestations. Um, so like we said, DevX support, um, you know, coming back, it's like, okay, am I vulnerable to a specific package? Uh, is the package, you know, does it have the, in, in the execution path, is it vulnerable? Uh, is it, so if it's not, then we have DevX and so forth. So that's coming. Um, the license information, there's been a lot of requests for this. So, you know, either it's from the SBOMs um, or from other third party sources, get the actual license information into the, the graph database. Um, ITE6, this is the in-toto attestation types, right? There's various in-toto attestation types. If, you know, there's runtime, there's sky, and so forth. Um, so getting all that stuff ingested. And the predicate dictionary, like Mihai mentioned, right? So that would make it easy, easier for us. So not recompiling, right? So we can, if new, new um, types of attestations come out, we can support that via the predicate dictionary. Um, the evidence store, evidence store, like I spoke about briefly, is like, can we, you know, if you want to store the SBOMs and uh, other attestations, in like an evidence store that you can quickly go query and pull up the information, that's also possible, and we wanna do that. And then, yeah, the GraphQL interface, right? Because it's so flexible, 
we want to keep expanding the integrations, right? We want to do the policy engines, the VS Code plugin, like I showed, create more more uh, CLI uh, tools, uh, update the UI, and so forth. And you know, just um, and if there are more queries that people would like to see, you know, we had we did we showed some simple queries here, but if there's more queries that people would like to see, we can get that integrated, and and the third-party tools can start utilizing them without having to do their own implementation. Yeah, and uh, we are going to do a beta release for Guac very soon. And uh, the, there will be like the block, the repository will be tagged and uh, you can then see the Guac documentation, the Go, Go documentation and so on. Uh, we have a monthly community meeting. There is one actually next week on Thursday. Uh, I have a link there and you can also watch the previous uh, community meetings on the YouTube channel. Uh, we have a Slack channel where everyone can join and the mailing list. Uh, that we would expect to get more activity and uh, basically we want to build a full ecosystem on application build on top of Guac. Uh, we have our documentation website that just got put up and should be ready for the beta release. It's part of the beta release process. Mm -hmm. If you discover any issues, any new features that you want to do, please report us to GitHub uh, or to Slack channel, to the mailing list. We always welcome those. We are open for any PRs and looking for advice for uh, contributors and tech advisory members, and you can scan the QR code to get to the repository where we have all of this information. Okay. Sure. I keep forgetting that. Uh, you mentioned your dependency on Perl. So how important is it that you have Perl references for the entire graph? Uh, what, because uh, a lot of libraries may not have. So is that a problem? So we tried to ingest dependency first just using Salsa, and we discovered that there are a lot of gaps. And uh, sometimes the name wouldn't match what the repository was for the source, so we couldn't get the scorecards information. Mm -hmm. Now that we integrate with devs.dev, we can get access to the entire ecosystem that devs.dev handle. So for example, if we have, let's say, TensorFlow, we get all of the TensorFlow Python packages from setup.py, that devs dev ingest and everything that is associated with them, the source repository, the scorecards, and so on. And then for the C++, if we don't use devs dev, we will have to actually handle, okay, TensorFlow is built using Bazel, the dependencies for C++ are specified in this way in Bazel, we will have to write our own parser, it will be much, much more work. With devs dev, if devs dev would have C++ uh, dependency information, we can just get the information from there and go to the repository and so on. So, uh, so Perl is like the word kind of pseudo pearls kind of thing. So where Guac is kind of using its own kind of format for the pearls. Um, so we are ingesting, uh, kind of recreated in that format so that it's easier for it to search and so forth. Uh, but if we can't, so it, like I said, like if you saw it before, there's a generic package, if you remember. It tries to create the based on the name. If it can find more information, it'll try to generate its own type of package um, so that we can keep track of it. Um, inside, again, uh, within Guac, we also have another, another uh, uh, relationship type called um, like package is similar kind of thing. So for example, later on down the line, you figure out, oh, this is the actual Perl, the actual Perl for this specific uh, package. Um, so now my, the one you kind of generated automatically, you can link it together. So like now, I, like now if it searches for a specific package uh, with the specific Perl or for the old one, you get all the information you knew before. So you can, you can go, uh, backtrack that information. I mean, uh, there is talk about hardware bombs now. Yeah. And uh, they use software ID tag. So, so do you use Perl's SWIDs interchangeably in, in your graphs? So I think we haven't looked into the hardware piece, but I think that's something we definitely want to look at. So I think that's something we'll have to get back to you on that. Yeah, so what we do each time we parse a document, we try to interpret that document into the Guac ontology and into the Guac, vocab Guac vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And we can get like, okay, this is the tree for this artifact from, from this Perl, our pseudo Perl in Guac. This is how it would look like. Or for an artifact identified by a checksum, it's identified, let's say, by SHA-256. And then later on, we ingest another document that talks about the same thing. Even if it's identified by something else, we can also ingest an attestation that says these two things are similar. Right. And this identity provides evidence that these two things mean the same thing. Yeah. So depend on that hash. Yeah. Doesn't matter what format right. or what spec it is. Mm -hmm. Cool, thanks. 
Um, I noticed the uh, the clay you're using is called guacconi. Is that uh, some suggestion of like a guac slash macaroni culinary crime or something like that? Uh, <laughs> so it's it's supposed to be guac all in one, but you can also interpret it as guacone. <laughs> guacone. Um, no, uh, serious question uh, with the roadmap um, stuff. Is there any particular project that uh, needs more help or um, with the call to action? Like, uh, what what's the priority amongst those? Where where can we help? So I think the persistent database. I think we want to get that. I think that's probably the, one of the most important features probably people, put, uh, the community would like to see. So I think we want to you know, figure out, okay, what is the best database that people would want to use? Um, and then I think the second piece, of course, is the hardening and the ingestion. So try it out and let us know if there are you know, ingestion issues, create issues, or you know, create open PRs and, and try to fix them yourself. Um, so we welcome that. I think those are the two main ones. And then, uh, of course, and then identity, uh, identity and trust. I guess uh, it's a day for Australians to ask questions. Um, <laughs> can't talk about it. Um, well, I am wearing Blundstones, actually. Yeah, sorry, I win. Okay, that's enough Australian inside okay. humour. Um, yeah, what happens when the documents change? So I have my sulfur att uh, attestations being ingested, my S bombs being ingested. What happens when they change and I get conflicting information? So right now we have, we store for every edge a type of node. We also store which document provided it. So when the new document comes in, we'll have uh, a pointer to the new one. And we plan to do like uh, some uh, scanner that will look over the database and identify uh, conflicting information, counterfactuals. Mm -hmm. And once you identify that, we can detect, okay, there are two documents that provide this information. They, the information they provide is conflicting. The second document is newer. The old document is old. We can delete everything that was pointed to from the old document and give only the new one. Yeah. And we can show that to the user for the user to decide, right? If they, yeah. what they trust more. Like if they, maybe the new document is coming from a bad source or a bad trust, right? Then we can delete that. Yeah, and I think one other thing that we're looking at and, and we're very interested in the space is a sort of the bitemporal sort of databases, right? Where, hey, we can potentially also go back in time. So you can say, yep. New data has invalidated the old data, but like for compliance and audit reasons, you know, when we deployed this piece of software, we actually weren't aware of this vulnerability when it existed, and we can actually look, you know, one of our goals and on the roadmap is is going to be going back in time and seeing like what can we what can we tell, you know, what what info what do we know when <laughs> is is uh, important. Any other questions? Back. I guess I had a question that was very similar on um, if you're ingesting two different SBOMs for different versions of your software, mm -hmm. do you have any capability to do analysis on the differences and, and what may have come up? Yeah, so we, we store both the SBOMs. So if the SBOM got stored, we know, okay, there are two different versions of the SBOM, um, and then you can do some, uh, so for the package, basically, we have, okay, where did, the, where did this package come from, the top level package? Um, it came from, you know, there's two S, there has two S bomb associated with it, and then there could be two different ways to uh, traverse the gas. So that's possible, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and another thing on that is also like, um, if you actually like look into each individual evidence or dependency, it actually tells you like, how did we end up coming up with this? So. Yeah. If you query all the dependencies, you can make your own judgment on. Um, today, today we have information like, okay, this came from this SPDX S bomb. This came from this Cyclone DX S bomb. Um, you know, you can trust which tool was the one that created it. Um, what we're trying to do is also trying to get S bomb generators to also provide more information on how they derived it, mm -hmm. and also kind of like, you know, there's a lot of talk on like, oh, was this done during the build? Was this done during analysis? Was this for the source code that you derived it, and so like each of them have like different uh, different information available, and then you want to be able to analyze that. Any other questions? So I just want to show off the this documentation site. Um, you can go in and find you know all the docs that are associated with it and all the different use cases that we kind of showed off today. Um, they're all in there, so if you kind of want to run it yourself, let us know. And and you know, I think this is this is a good meme right here. And then 
Uh, and then another one is, I had to delete the pictures for copyright reasons, but you can imagine Bruce Wayne and, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Razo Ghul, yeah, talking here about S bombs. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.